Our next speaker is Daniel Theobald, founder and CEO of Vecna Robotics. Thank you, Stex. Uh, it's great to be here. My name is Daniel Theobald. I'm founder and CEO of Vecna Robotics and co-founder and president of Mass Robotics. Uh, we are focusing on autonomous material handling, um, primarily bulk handling. So think about pallets, large items, et cetera. Next slide. Uh, as you look around the room you're in, uh, what you might realize is that most of the items you see spent a significant portion of the time uh, pre-store shelf or, or pre-online um, uh, purchase on the pallet. And uh, the, the supply chain really is, as we've seen recently, very um, sensitive to um, disturbances. COVID has made us more aware of that than ever. And there are a lot of problems that you run into, safety issues. Uh, it's hard to hold on to those supply chain employees. Um, a, a lot of inefficiency in the supply chain that leads to um, uh, non-ideal throughput, um, a lot of waste. Uh, many people don't realize uh, in the warehouse, uh, some, some research recently showed that uh, up to from 30 to 50 percent of a worker equipment's time is, is uh, either unutilized or underutilized. Um, and uh, there's a real problem dealing with problems. They call these exceptions. What do you do when something goes wrong? So, you know, the, the um, need to move things efficiently from loading dock A to loading dock B can uh, encounter a lot of unexpected challenges in the real world. Next slide. So what Vecna Robotics has done is built Pivotal, the world's first AI SaaS-based orchestration engine. And part of that Pivotal platform is what we call the Autonomy Kit. The Autonomy Kit is essentially a black box that can turn any piece of industrial equipment into a fully autonomous mobile robot. So think driverless forklift. Uh, anywhere you're moving pallets or, or large items uh, in a factory or a warehouse, um, a uh, um, retail operation, uh, that can be done completely autonomously, uh, autonomously and safely. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, once you've made that piece of equipment autonomous, um, the, the real value that we can unlock comes from orchestration, making sure that you've got the right piece of equipment and the right human worker in the right place at the right time. Next slide. And it's really all about learning and adapting in real time. Uh, none of these operations uh, are, are static. It used to be that you could sort of plan out a warehouse and, and have it operate largely unchanged for a decade. Um, but these days, it's hard to predict what you're going to be doing even, even uh, three months from now. And uh, what that means is that you need more flexible technology. Um, you need systems that are not um, built in, uh, heavy infrastructure, and uh, the autonomous mobile robots can be a really important part of this. Here you're seeing an um, autonomous pallet jack moving items around in a, a large warehouse, uh, saving us a, a significant amount of time. But um, some really exciting things happen when you bring robots and humans together in, in a very coordinated way. And there's a use case here uh, at FedEx where you can see that um, when we had uh, just the robots uh, installed, they provided great ROI. But then when we started coordinating the robots um, uh, routes in real time based on on the ground information um, uh, pulled in from uh, the system, you got a large increase in throughput. But then when we coordinated both the humans and the robots, we got over two times increase in throughput. And that's really, again, this idea of having the right resource in the right place at the right time. Next slide. Daniel, we have to almost wrap up soon. So uh, what, uh, what are we looking for? Uh, partnerships in a number of industries. Uh, if you have a piece of equipment that uh, uh, you need to have automated as an OEM, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, obviously, if you are a warehouse or a manufacturing facility moving pallets and other items around, we'd love to talk to you. We'll take a couple of um, audience questions. So there's other companies um, like Fetch and Auto that have some uh, similar orchestration engine. How are you unique? Yeah, we have been focused on solving this problem for a couple of decades now. And 
the I think one of the biggest things that um, separates SARS is the ability to really operate in real time and pull. We track where all of the equipment is. We're able to track where all of the human workers are. And then, um, uh, you know, Pivotal is sort of like a grandmaster chess player. It understands what demand, uh, the demand generator is asking for, for instance, your warehouse management system or your manufacturing execution system, your order management system. And it understands what resources are available and where they are. And it's a bit, is able to make the um, ideal uh, assignment of tasks. It's somewhat like a Uber, um, you know, an Uber ride-sharing algorithm in that uh, you're, you're trying to coordinate a large number of uh, resources in, in real time, and it deals very robustly with uh, errors and exceptions. So plans never go as uh, expected, and the system's ability to do what we call iterative plan and repair it's got a plan. It's executing the plan. The plan doesn't go as expected. It it, it replans in real time. Uh, really sets our system apart. Great, Marcos. Do we have time for one more? Or let's take one more, please. Great. Um, how do you track the human workers, and also how do they feel about um, having um, adopting robots on the floor? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, the uh, tracking of human workers happens through a number of different technologies, uh, depending on the customers. Anywhere from ultra wideband to Wi-Fi based uh, can also happen based on their most recent scan. Um, the the workers, uh, I think, um, you you see oftentimes in the media the whole robots versus uh, workers thing. So there's some apprehension um, uh, before they start working with the robots, but as soon as they start engaging with the robots, the very typical response we get is wow, this makes my job way better. And uh, if, I, if I learn how to use this, um, it's gonna help my career because then I can go and teach other people as well. So it, it moves from a, a threat to an, uh, a career enhancement very, very quickly. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Let's go to the next speaker, Daniel Wentzloff, co-founder and co-CTO of uh, EverActive. All right, thank you, Marcus. Actually, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Dave Wensloff, uh, and I'm the co-founder and co-CTO at EverActive. And let me share my screen here. At EverActive, we are developing full-stack monitoring solutions for industrial applications, including self-powered wireless sensors that are maintenance-free, combined with cloud-based software to provide insights in real time from that uh, sense data. A typical industrial facility will have thousands of assets, including things like motors, pumps, and valves. And today these assets are to a large extent just unmonitored. And at EverActive, uh, we've developed a continuous monitoring solution, including wireless sensors that operate from harvested energy with no battery. This allows us to deploy lots more sensors that are all maintenance free without having to worry about going back and changing a battery. And then we operate our sensors continuously. They're always monitoring because they have a virtually unlimited power source. And that provides a rich set of data to the cloud. These new data streams allow us to derive information on specific assets, such as the operational state of a steam trap or flag if maintenance is required on a motor, and then deliver those insights directly to our customers in real time. Uh, we provide an end-to-end -end solution, uh, which we sell as a service-based subscription today. This means we provide everything, including the industrial grade sensors, the communication through our own wireless network that we manage, uh, which then backhauls to the cloud where we securely store the data and run our further analytics on it. Um, our key differentiation comes from our custom ultra low power chip inside each of our self powered sensors. The chip manages the energy harvesting, the sensor interfaces, does local processing, does all the wireless communication, including an always on receiver. And our wireless network can scale to thousands of devices per gateway, each with millisecond latency and a 250 meter range for our latest product. So a couple football fields. Uh, this allows us to monitor thousands of assets without uh, adding a single battery to the maintenance schedule. We currently offer two products, a steam trap monitoring service that's been in production for about a year and a half and a machine health monitoring service, which is currently in beta with some existing customers, uh, but we'll be releasing later this month. Both products are focused on key pain points in industrial processes that, uh, <clears throat> where there can be thousands of traps or motors spread across the factory that are rarely inspected. 
Uh, but when these do fail, they immediately start costing real dollar losses through wasted steam or poor efficiency. And sometimes these failures can go undetected for months or years. Our continuous monitoring uh, provides a three to nine X return on investment every year with a payback period that's typically measured in months um, by reducing the cost of downtime, uh, energy, uh, maintenance, and safety. Uh, we do recognize that the IoT is a gigantic market and are interested in partnering in order to bring this technology to even more applications. So today, this could look like a continuous monitoring solution that leverages our current flexible sensor platform and wireless network to target new industrial assets. Uh, and our current sensor platforms uh, can support all these harvesters and sources uh, and sensors that you see here on the slide. Uh, and then once the data reaches the cloud, there's additional partnership opportunities there because there's virtually endless possibilities for what we can do with that data. Uh, we're also looking at the next generation of our low power chip to enable batterless monitoring with smaller size, uh, longer range, uh, more compute, uh, and additional sensing capabilities. And we'd be interested in discussing how we could partner to help shape our future platform to develop, deliver tomorrow's IoT uh, solutions as well. So I'll leave with you a few questions to think about just to see the discussion on how we may partner. Um, what do you want to monitor uh, that is currently inaccessible uh, for some reason? Uh, where would you put a no maintenance batteryless sensor? And what do you really want to know about your facility or operation? Uh, or perhaps you might want to talk about how you could take advantage of one of our existing uh, steam trap or machine health monitoring services in your facility today. So thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks, David. We'll do a couple of questions from the audience. How is the connectivity deployed in a factory? So in a factory, we will install, uh, with, with help from our customers, we will install gateways. Those gateways talk down using our uh, EverActive's uh, wireless sensor network to our batteryless sensors, and then backhauls to the cloud, typically over LTE, but uh, we can also support Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Great, and how do you go to market? Can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, we're taking this to market as a service. So uh, it's an annual subscription on a per sensor or per asset basis. That includes uh, all of the hardware. It includes the gateways. It includes the LTE backhaul. It includes uh, all of the cloud infrastructure. And it includes delivering those real-time insights uh, directly to our customers. Great. Um, how do you scale this um, when you have uh, support specific applications like stream straps. Um, can the customer develop their own? Yeah, I love the scaling question. We thought about scaling from the start. You know, the, the IoT is expected to reach a trillion devices. That's gonna require scale. So um, first, just for our system, our system is designed to support uh, a thousand nodes per gateway. So we can, we can scale to thousands of nodes in a facility, each with low latency and continuous communication to the cloud. Um, so as far as uh, new, new products or new assets that we may, may monitor, we are working with our existing customers to identify you know, what those main pain points are. I'd love to talk to uh, anyone who wants to follow up uh, with a conversation about what they might want to monitor. The next speaker, his name is John Wass, CEO, CEO of Profit Isle. Great. All right, well, thanks everyone for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm John Wass, I'm the CEO of Profit Isle. Uh, my partner is Dr. Jonathan Burns, who's been teaching at MIT for the last 30 years. Our company Profit Isle is based on a book Jonathan wrote, um, Islands of Profit in the Sea of Red Ink. And we have taken the concepts of that book and created software uh, that allows companies to look underneath their profit and loss statement down all the way to the, excuse me, that's going a little fast. Uh, down all the way to the individual transaction level. And by looking below the uh, profit and loss statement, we're able to see patterns of profitability that are not available to companies in their traditional uh, financial reporting systems. And we have consistently been able to help companies improve their profitability by 10% in less than 12 months. In today's age, the speed and complexity of business are really accelerating quite dramatically. And um, 
Um, things like precision marketing are really driving the organizations, but many companies haven't really looked at their internal systems as well as they need to. Specifically, the P&L really hasn't changed dramatically in almost over 200 years. It was designed by humans for humans. And in an age when averages were sufficient because prices were uniform and overall complexity was much lower. In the digital age, you really need to see below that and you have to see exactly the profitability for each of every single transaction. And the only way to do that is with a decision support system like Profitile. We have put about $100 billion of revenue through our model and we can say with confidence that the old paradigm of gross margin does not correlate to profitability. And now, especially in the COVID pandemic, where manufacturing costs are um, um, changing so dramatically, standard costs are unreliable, where distributor costs are really unknown given how dramatically their supply chains are changing, and with retailers really not understanding their business model due to the massive shift in channel. Uh, without the type of solution that we have, it's very difficult for customer, for their client, for our clients to make uh, decisions about where to put their resources in these types of changes. What we do is we produce a, um, uh, a basically uh, this um, profit landscape. So we can produce a contour map that shows the peaks of profit uh, by customer product and channel, and we can also show where the profit drains are. Uh, we use these types of profit maps to help companies understand the underlying profitable patterns that uh, you can't see in an average profitability of 6%. So we're using underneath the math here is we're using cluster analysis. Uh, we basically will uh, look at your business through the lens of customers. So we can identify your most profitable customers and your least profitable customers. We can also then do the same thing for products and for all your operations, whether that's a uh, manufacturing line or whether it's a distribution center or whether it's a retail store or it's a service organization. Uh, we can look at the profitability below all of those. Uh, a manufacturing case study we did with a $3 billion equipment manufacturer. Uh, we configured the, the uh, business model for them in, base, in less than six weeks. Uh, we were able to identify opportunities to re improve their profitability by over 50%. Uh, they selected SKU management to focus their profit improvement efforts, uh, which represented about half of the total opportunity. And we were able to help them understand uh, how their service level problems and their SKU perforation we're having a huge impact on their profitability and gave them a solution that allowed them to create an internal hurdle rate and created a capability for them to change their, how they priced new SKUs and how they brought them into the company. Uh, this generated a 14% improvement in profitability in uh, 12 months. So we have experience across multiple industries, manufacturing, distribution, retail services, including financial services and transportation. Uh, we are offering a six-week uh, pilot where we can go in and configure the model for a company and then quickly show them the value of the solution and then uh, move forward with uh, our ongoing value proposition, which is basically an annual subscription. So thank you very much. Thanks, John. We'll go on to a couple of questions from the audience. Do you also share next uh, best actions and recommendations? For example, can you increase profits by rationalizing um, the warehouse, etc.? Yes, we basically um, worked with a large company to do a uh, essentially a, uh, a real-time uh, activity-based cost analysis of all the activity inside the uh, distribution center, and we're able to isolate which products and which and how they're being picked uh, to help them understand their overall profitability. Great, and also um, let's put this in perspective now with the pandemic. How does uh, COVID-19 market disruptions affect the benefits of profit aisle solutions? Um, now more than ever, understanding where your true profits are is critical because if you're making changes or layoffs or restructuring your organization, if you don't truly understand where you're getting your profits from, you could easily expose some of the core profitability of your company uh, to a, a major change. And in our experience, uh, something less than 15% of your customers are doing somewhere between 150 and 200% of your profits. If you expose that small group of customers to some of the broader changes that you might be anticipating, uh, you could have a very uh, rapid negative impact on your profitability. Thank you, John. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is, uh, as Marcus just said, Jason Barton. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at Realtime Robotics. Realtime is a startup based in Boston. We're about 40 people strong right now. And uh, we're delighted to say that two of our founders are MIT alumni. 
and uh, we continue to enjoy a very uh, great connection with the MIT community um, as it stands right now. So real-time technology can provide value across the board to robots essentially working in any environment. However, today as a company, we focus on factory automation and autonomous vehicles. And for the speech today, I'm gonna to be talking about specifically factory automation. So um, we've all heard that the robot revolution is coming. People always talk to the automation is gonna take over, but really the reality is quite different. Currently robots only account for less than 0.3% of the billion people that are employed for, dyna for dynamic motor skills today. So we're barely scratching the surface. So why is this? The problem is robots are physically very capable, but they're dumb. They exist in very rigid, structured environments, doing very repetitive tasks with very to little or no flexibility. Robot programming is primitive and very complex and typically accounts for 40% of the cost of deploying a work cell. And it's this complexity and cost that's prohibiting automation to really scale as it should. So we at Realtime believe that we have the answer by automating this robot uh, planning process and eliminating the complexity of robots and sensors as they're connected with automation. Our solution can reduce robot programming by 80% and total deployment costs by up to 35%. Excuse me. So how do we do this? We do this by using the real-time controller and the latest advancements in machine learning and artificial intelligence. The real-time controller can plan and test millions of motions at millisecond speeds, simultaneously coordinating and optimizing multiple robots in real time. If you look on the left-hand side, present technology today, so the conventional way to program technology in robotics is very much like the old way of giving directions. I could give you directions to get to the airport, but if I gave you a wrong turn or a road was closed, the directions become very quickly useless. For, thankfully, today we have GPS, so to get wherever you need to go, you simply have to enter your goal location and GPS will get you there on time and will deal with changes along the way. The real-time controller is essentially the GPS for robot systems. In this example, you see our real-time controller is controlling four robots that are very, very tightly uh, placed together. In conventional programming, this would essentially be impossible. It would be too long to be able to program each individual motion and you wouldn't be able to program them in a collision-free manner. With our system, all we need to do is set the start location and the goal location, and then our robots will automatically plan collision-free and get to, the, get to their locations. You can see in the left-hand side there, the sweat volumes that the robots are taking and how they avoid each other. We are working with over 40 global companies um, throughout the globe in North America, Asia, and also Europe. And here are a few examples in the automotive space and also the e-commerce space. In the second example here, you can see an example of our partnership with Siemens. We re recently announced this uh, partnership where our technology will be offered as a component of their industry leading software simulation program, Process Simulate. With this particular customer, an automotive company in Germany, we were able to show them an 83% reduction in the programming time and cost of developing this work cell. They're now gonna be rolling this technology together with Siemens out throughout their simulation group, as well as um, throughout their factory floor. Real time is transforming how industrial robotic applications are programmed, deployed and executed, and tackling head on the complexity and cost that is prohibiting manufacturers to automate more frequently. We're looking to focus our efforts on the automotive space and electronics and logistics, and we welcome opportunities and introductions to end users, as end users and also system integrators in these spaces. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jason. Great. Um, let's move on to some questions. Despite the growing demand for robotics, why has it been so difficult and costly for companies to bring them on or implement them? Yeah, I think it boils down to this complexity. So, um, you know, if it's a large manufacturer, even small, medium-sized manufacturers, everyone's keen to automate more. COVID-19 and the pandemic has really underlined this even more, I think, in terms of, you know, the need to be able to have alternatives to human labor. But really the biggest stumbling block and the biggest issue is um, the complexity and cost of automating. So the ROI hasn't been there. 
So we're, as a company and as a, many, many companies in this market are really looking to try and reduce that friction and reduce that uh, prohibitive wall to being able to manufacture more by just making it generally more easy and more seamlessly integrated. Great. And can you talk a little more about which uh, market holds the biggest opportunity for real-time robotics or a few of them? Sure, yeah. So up until now, we spent most of our time in automotive and electronics. That's been our focus to date. But uh, again, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, and I think this was already growing this way anyway, but the logistics market fueled by e-commerce is becoming uh, significant for everybody, I think. And um, we're seeing a lot of inbound interest into uh, our kind of technology to help them automate their processes more efficiently using our vision systems to be able to you know, analyze different parts of their operations, as well as using our technology to reduce the complexity and improve their throughput. 